In the description box below, we've included great resources to assist you, including links to our how-to hub. Be sure to check it out often as we are always updating the content. This is part one of a three-part series on ICX. This part covers stacking. Part two will cover campus fabrics, also referred to as SPX. And part three, we will perform a UFI upgrade on our entire fabric, including the stack and SPX devices. I'll provide links to the following parts in the series in the description box below. Since we are working with 7750s, I'll point out that this product supports up to 12 units per stack. Also, the default stacking ports on the 7750 are Ethernet 121 and Ethernet 124. The default stacking ports differ per platform. I recommend you refer to the Ruckus Fast Iron Stacking Configuration Guide on the support portal for more information on your specific series of ICX. We are working with 8070 software, so we will be using the Stack Secure Setup command. In 8090 software and later, the Stack Secure Setup command has been deprecated and replaced with a Stack Interactive Setup command. I have each of the 7750's CLI shown here. 7751 is on the left, and 7752 is on the right. Before we begin, we'll need to verify that both switches are running the same version of software. If they aren't, the stack will not form. As I perform a show version, the output displays that our switches are both running matching versions of 8070G. Now let's set up our intended active stack controller to participate in stacking. The active controller handles stack management and configures all system and interface level features within the stack. I'm establishing that 7751 will become the active stack controller. This device does not have stacking enabled by default, so we need to configure it. We'll enter config mode by typing config T, then stack enable. As we can see from this output, the device will now participate in stacking. Now we exit out of config mode and type stack secure setup. Once we initiate the stack secure setup command, which I will demonstrate here shortly, a few notable things will happen. First, using a Ruckus proprietary discovery protocol, neighboring devices will be identified on stack ports only. Then, the active controller will inform each neighbor in the stack to update its unit ID. In our example, 7752 will be assigned unit ID 2. Devices that receive updated unit IDs will then reboot. Bear in mind the non-stack configuration of any device assigned a new stack unit ID will be saved and stored but omitted on reboot. As the reboot of 7752 completes, 7751 will then propagate its configuration down to 7752. At that point, the stack configuration, interface assignments, management IP address, and any other system configurations will be propagated to the standby controller. Stack Secure Setup is now discovering our neighbor device. There it is. It's discovered the device and also the ring topology, which is how it's cabled. Let's accept this topology since it is accurate. This step is asking us to verify the automatically assigned unit IDs. You can say no here and manually configure them, but we are gonna say why to accept what was automatically assigned. As we discussed, our standby device just received its new unit ID assignment and has been informed it's becoming part of a stack. Now it accepts the reboot. The standby device is back up. We could perform a show run in this device, but since the devices are now stacked, the running configuration will match that of 7751. Let's jump into the active controller, perform a show run, and check a few things. First, we can see our stacking configuration here. We see both units within the stack, including the device type and their stacking ports. Now, let's perform a show stack. When we perform a show stack, we can see our stack configuration. If this is your first time seeing this, it might seem a little confusing. This is simply depicting how our stack topology is physically cabled. We can see active and standby above a box. The numbers in those boxes represent the physical switch and its unit ID. Below that, we see what translates to a topology diagram of our stack, but it looks kind of like ASCII art. Interface 1x2x4 is connected to 2x2x1, 
while one by two by one is connected to two by two by four. One last thing to note, we see here it is stating that protocols may not be ready for another 66 seconds. This is what's remaining from a 90 second timer. It's a great idea to wait for this timer to expire before we expect full functionality of our stack. If for any reason you need to change which device in your stack is the active controller, you can do that. A good example of this, you need to RMA a single device in the stack. Now keep in mind, you only need to do the switch over between your active and standby controller if you're needing to RMA or remove one of those devices from the stack. If it's a member device, you don't need to do that. You just uncable it and remove it from the stack. Right now, our devices are using default stack priorities. The active controller's default priority is 128. Let's make our standby controller the active. Enter config T, stack unit 2, priority 255. 255 is the highest priority you can set on a stack unit. Now we perform a write memory. After a two minute timer expires, our standby controller will become the active. Another way you can perform a controller change is by issuing a stack switchover. However, there are some caveats. As you can see here, the command is going to rely on our stack priorities per unit. Since our current active controller has the same priority, it can't switch over. This is important to note if you configure your intended active and standby controllers to have the same priority. To demonstrate, I'll set stack unit 1's priority to 255 and perform the command again. It will take two minutes to update the priority. This two minute timer simply allows the stack to ensure all of the system configuration is synced within the entire stack. Okay, we see here that the priority has updated and we can see that no election change happened. That's good. Let's perform stack switchover again. Oops, we're not ready yet. I wanted to show this because if you're anything like me, sometimes you become impatient, but the system's not gonna switch over until it's ready. Okay, I waited a bit longer, so let's try this again. Bingo, now we just type Y to confirm the switchover and hit enter. Okay, that's it, the stack is up. Now you can switch your active controllers if need be. Come back for part two. We are adding in some switch port extenders to make this environment even larger and more robust. Before you go, don't forget to check the description box below and access any of the great resources we've provided. Thanks for watching.